Hi everyone, I'm here to demonstrate RetroTINK, um, the S-Video and Component Video Adapter for the Raspberry Pi. So this is our um, latest prototype. It's basically the same as the production model, but this is the one I built for myself. Here's my Raspberry Pi. It's got this uh, case. I hacked it with a big antenna because the Wi-Fi reception down here is really, really bad. So let me just put this together. Pretty simple. Connects through the 40-pin uh, GPIO connector. Here's my setup. I've got a uh, Sony PVM here that I picked up really cheap at UCSD Surplus. And then I really lucked out. I got a 27-inch Trinitron, the FE310 series off uh, Lady on Craigslist. Didn't know it was so great till I got it and found out that it's kind of the uh, holy grail for retro gaming CRT. But anyways, here's the Raspberry Pi, so I'm gonna connect it up. Got my component video cable. I know the colors are wrong, but it doesn't really matter. Also going to connect S video and composite because I want to do a comparison and demonstration. So it also has S video and composite outputs. So I'll also explain a little bit about how it works. So it takes the digital uh, display parallel interface output and it has this uh, D to A converter, 8 bits, using an R to R resistor ladder. So it's got a voltage regulator so that the video signals are very low noise. Then um, there's a analog circuit that converts the RGB output into component video outputs. I also have an NTSC encoder with an oscillator to uh, generate the chroma signal for S-Video as well as composite. Now, you can you always use the composite on the built-in uh, built of the Raspberry Pi, but in either case, composite isn't that great, which, I, which I'll show you later. So I also have my USB hub here. Um, I use it because the Raspberry Pi is a little bit short on power, so having a powered USB hub means these peripherals don't steal power from the Raspberry Pi. I also have a USB audio output, uh, USB audio sound card because the built-in one on the Raspberry Pi is really bad. If you're doing anything serious on the Raspberry Pi, I really recommend you get a USB sound adapter. So I'm going to power this thing up. I think that should be it. see the Raspberry Pi booting up on the screen and in a moment emulation station should start. Takes a while, got a lot of ROMs. And now we're in business, so let me switch over to some videos that I can show you the output of this thing. Let's start with Castlevania running in composite video. It's uh, pretty blurry, you can see the dot crawl artifacts. It's really bad uh, in the trees. Switching over to S-Video now cleans up quite a bit. You can see the dot crawl artifacts are completely eliminated. And now things look a lot better. Probably better than the original Nintendo. Over to component video now. Wow, that is sharp. You can pretty much see the boundary of every single pixel. On a simple game like this, it might almost be a little bit too sharp. I'd like to show you guys a 3-up of the screen capture from the composite S-Video and component video outputs. The differences are really obvious if you take a look at the fence at the bottom of the screen. In the composite output, you can see some serious artifacts in the fences of the bars. The S-Video gets a bit better, but if you take a look at the difference between S-Video and component, you can see that in the component video, the red of the fence bars doesn't bleed into the black areas. In the still shot, it seems that the composite and S-Video outputs are quite close, but you have to remember, when you're looking at a live screen, it's really the dot crawl and the shimmer that kills the composite video. Interestingly, you can see a little bit of a problem with my TV on the component video output. Um, the red of the fence is too red. You can't see the two tones very clearly. Um, the red push is a bit of a common problem with these, these Trinitrons. 
uh, still need to go into the service menu and turn that down. Now let's switch over to Super Metroid running on composite. You can see the dot crawl running along the edges of the text. It's pretty blurry, but this is probably what your Super Nintendo was running on back in the day. Switching over to S Video, you can see all the dot crawl is gone. Overall, the picture is much better, but if you look really closely, you can see that it's still a little bit fuzzy. Here is the component video output. You can see it's much sharper. The text is clearly defined. There isn't any bleed. Everything is just super sharp. Now this is certainly way better than what I had back in the day. Here's a close-up of the composite S-video and component video outputs. You can see the difference. Like before, it seems that composite and S-video are pretty close, whereas component is much sharper. But you have to remember, it's the moving dot crawl artifacts that really make composite unbearable. You can see in the S-video that the background pixels are much better defined, and even more so once you go from S-video to component. Really the big advantage of component video is that it has much higher color bandwidth. That's why in the component video the colors don't bleed together. Take a close look at the red armor on Samus. You can see the S video, the red bleeds out into the black area, whereas in the component video everything is super sharp. Now let's do a quick playthrough. Um, here we're running on component video of course, and I'm just goofing off. I think there's a bit of a frame rate mismatch between the camera and the TV, that's why Samus disappears. It's not really like that in real life. I'd also like to take this moment to thank everyone that I've been working with uh, to try to get this up and running. Um, especially Kevin Fishborn, who set up a Discord app thread. Um, we've been trying to get, well mostly he's been doing all the hard work trying to get the image settings correctly so that um, the output of the Raspberry Pi matches as closely as possible to the original console. You'll see that the game actually fits the entire width of the screen, um, which isn't a small feat. I'd also like to thank Michael Vencio who figured out how to switch the resolution on the fly between uh, 1600 and 240 and 320 and 240. That way we can have a very wide horizontal resolution when playing games so that you can stretch as needed without seeing these ugly scaling artifacts while switching back to a normal resolution so that the GUI and the menus work properly. I'd also like to thank RetroRGB and um, everyone else that I've been talking to on the GitHubs and the various forums. Um, it's been a lot of work trying to get the configuration settings right and um, that's been a huge help in getting this thing up and running. And of course I'd like to thank everyone that supported this project so far. Um, really appreciate your interest, and I'm really happy to hear that I'm not the only nerd out there that still likes to play these games. Here I've switched over to Marvel vs. Capcom. I really like this game because it's so colorful. Unlike home console games, arcade games really should be played in RGB since that's what they were designed for. Of course, here in North America, we aren't lucky enough to have SCART inputs. Thankfully, um, later CRTs do have component video inputs, which theoretically should be just as good. I have to say, I'm really impressed by all the hard work that um, everyone has put in in making the Raspberry Pi a emulation platform. It's really amazing how far things have come and just how many systems that the Raspberry Pi can play at full speed. It's really a game changer. I'm still having troubles here and there on my PC um, trying to get the emulation to work properly. There's always a frame rate or an audio glitch that, uh, that needs to be fixed. Um, whereas here on this $30 Raspberry Pi, everything just seems to work perfectly. Just really amazing stuff. It's kind of sad that uh, CRTs are kind of going the way of the dinosaur. Um, at least uh, right now it's still pretty easy to find a good CRT for the cheap on Craigslist, but I'm gonna guess uh, within a few years or so it's probably not going to be the case anymore. I just picked up a 24 inch FB300. Not sure how many more TVs my wife is going to let me get uh, before we clutter up the house. So I'm trying to enjoy it while it lasts. It's really a great TV. The only real problem I have with it is that in the upper left hand 
seems a bit blurry. I've owned several Trinitrons, they all seem to have the same problem, so maybe it's some sort of design flaw. Anyways, that's enough rambling for now. Um, thank you again, and especially to everyone who supported this project so far.